Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Deluxe Class Chromia. This figure came out in 2019 as part of Wave 2 of the Deluxe Assortment. While not a retool of Power of the Prime's Moonracer per se, Chromia shares much of her engineering with Moonracer. Chromia transforms into a Cybertronian car, one which happens to be a little more windshield heavy than her original cartoon model, but still retaining the original loaf of bread profile. It definitely looks like a cross between a van and a sports car. A minivan, perhaps? All I can say is that she definitely looks good next to Ironhide, hashtag relationship goals. Now, Siege's sculpt work is usually described as greebly by many, but Chromia takes it to a serious extreme with a massive helping of sculpted detail that's only rivaled by Starscream. It helps that her nice arctic blue plastic, one of my favorite colors by the way, really helps bring out the detail with natural shading. Sadly, about a third of her body is made up of clear plastic, with multiple locking points. Yikes. So that means a good helping of Chromia's paint budget is dedicated to covering up over half of the shell. At that point, why even bother? This vehicle mode falls apart even further at the back. Up top there's an obvious mammary roof, and around the back is a massive gap with a particularly metastatized case of visible hand syndrome. It's gotten so bad it's become visible arm syndrome. This is immensely tragic because Chromia doesn't even have the excuse of having a jet for an alternate mode. This is a fatal flaw of the clan Moonracer, as not only Chromia has been infected, but so have Moonracer, Novastar, Greenlight, Lancer, and the as of scripting upcoming Nightbird figure. I'm sure Ratchet's working on a cure. I'll be skipping accessories this time until after we take a look at the robot mode, so that means it's time for transformation. Chromia transforms much in the same way as Moonracer and Novastar before her, which is to say that she's a shell former. Almost the entire roof of the car comes away from the body in one massive panel and just curls up onto her back like the world's shittiest backpack, with enough space between the panel itself and the body to fit a family of four. The arms are a joke, as you can see exactly where they come from in vehicle mode, while the legs hardly do any transforming whatsoever as they're already stock straight underneath the shell. The only real bit of transformation on the limbs are the rotating fenders, which just feel like an afterthought since they don't even lock in. And don't even get me started on the waist piece. Chromia's robot mode certainly resembles her show model, in that she's lithe and slender. At least half of her is. The other half is lumped onto her back like Chromia's taken up residence at Notre Dame. Personally, I'd rather have Chromia integrate more of the vehicle mode mass in her robot mode, but it looks like Hasbro's design team knew that those chuckle fucks who want every figure to look exactly like the cartoon would bitch and moan unless Chromia had those supple sculpted thighs and toned tits. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a figure having a typically feminine body type, far from it, but at some point you have to realize that maybe it's not worth having a massive backpack. I mean, look at Robots in Disguise strong arm. More of that instead of forcing boxy alternate modes to l turn into supermodels. Save it for the bikes. That being said, the front half of this robot mode at least looks nice. The head sculpt is very faithful to the original model, something I was expecting no matter what. Her body features multiple tones of blue, which both go together really well and never dominate the color palette, especially with the added white. Pardon me while I stare daggers at Titan's Return Blur. Who should be taking notes from his Japanese brother? The added red on her helmet, collar, and midriff are welcome and really pop against the icy bluish tones. So, while I believe Hasbro gave a valiant effort in giving what they thought the fans wanted, it's not doing any favors for me. Chromia comes with a record-breaking four accessories. Or rather, three accessories and one copy. First up is the RT-5 Anti-Thermo Blaster, which is a small pistol cast entirely in Chromia's own sky blue plastic, which resembles the pistol she wields in her character model. Adding onto it is the SR Hush Fuse, which can serve as either a laughably large scope or a silencer, the latter of which is my preferred option. The other two accessories are EMP grenades, or so I'm told. They're plastic blobs that no one can convincingly hold, and I'm mostly afraid of them just getting lost. I usually keep them pegged into the sides of her massive backpack, but the instructions do show that you can extend the length of the pistol with the grenades, though that seems a tad counterproductive, wouldn't you agree? In vehicle mode, Chromia features some 5mm ports on the top and sides which happily seat the gun. 
while the grenades can clip together and peg onto the two ports at the rear of the car, which could make them some kind of boosters? Either way, these EMP grenades don't exactly add any fun value to me, since they're so darn small, and I've almost lost them a couple times already, but I digress. Now on paper, Chromia is a poseable figure, but in practice, things aren't as good or dandy as they may seem. Starting off with the head like normal, she has a ball-jointed head with an impressive range. She can look all the way up for, like, flying poses. Though, in this particular stance, she looks like she's about to throw herself headfirst into a wall. Her collar can come up like that for transformation, though I don't think that looks particularly natural. She doesn't have uh, a joint at her uh, ball joint stem like Moonracer or Novastar do, but that's okay. She's still pretty poseable in the neck. The arms are universal joints. They have a swivel that goes forward and back, and they only get hindered by the backpack. They go out pretty far, not 180 degrees, but it's good enough for government work, don't, wouldn't you agree? And besides, you could, in fact, rotate the arms upwards and bring them out and use the bicep swivel to get even greater range. So now she's asserting way more dominance than she ever needs to. But yeah, the bicep swivels are just a simple mushroom peg uh, from her shoulder into her bicep, so mm, pretty standard. The elbow only goes about 90 degrees. That's okay. That's what I consider the baseline for a good elbow, but, you know, bare minimum and all that. Her wrist can go inwards as if she's broken it. It looks knee. It's actually kind of gross. So yeah, the arms are okay. The waist can swivel, can it? Yes, it can, but uh, as you saw right there, uh, her pants came off. I don't know why these are a separate piece. I don't know why they're included at all. But they are, and they fall off a lot. You saw them fall off during transformation, I assure you. But yeah, the waist does swivel, but not very far in any direction. It gets hampered by this hinge deal back here. Let's just put these back on or else I'm gonna get a strike on YouTube. The hips are ball joints, and they go about forward that far. Uh, it's not very far. Not very high. They go back that far until they hit the kibble on the back. I'm sensing a little pattern here. I'm not happy with that backpack. They have a thigh swivel that goes all the way around, which is pretty nifty. And the knee uh, gets hampered by these shin plates. I don't know what they're called or what they should be called, but you can rotate them out of the way. And her knee only bends 90 degrees, which, you know, baseline for a good knee joint, so it's adequate. But still, this is about as far as you can bend it before the plate gets uh, in the way of her thigh, which is frustrating. At the feet, she has a rocking ankle back and forth, mostly backwards due to transformation. And the placement of the joint's a little unnatural, but I can forgive that. And she has an insanely deep uh, ankle pivot, which means she can, oops, she can take some incredibly wide stances, as you can see here. However, the ankle pivots are just a little too tight for my liking, which means that it's a little hard to get her into a natural stance very easy, because I like to set my figures on the floor and then fiddle with the ankle pivot because uh, it's just easy for me. But with Chromia, it's a little frustrating because they're so tight. <sighs> Clothe yourself, woman. Jesus Christ. There are children watching this. Anyway, Chromia is adequate. She's not good. Nothing about her posability is good but it's not half bad either. And one thing I would like to bring up from the posability is you see how small her feet are and you see how massive this backpack is. That means that if you just plop her down, 
she she more than like more likely than not she won't be able to stand but i've had this figure for a good little while so it's a little, a little easy to figure out how things work so yeah chromia in a word not a good time that's one word Boy, it's a good thing I'm reviewing the Wave 2 Deluxes in alphabetical order, considering Chromia is the worst one! She's got an alright vehicle mode that gradually gets more and more cancerous the farther back you go, until it becomes a diseased wasteland. The transformation is a joke that was never funny, and the robot mode is a back-heavy mess. This mold was already received very lukewarm on the first two versions a year ago, and now Hasbro expects us to shell out for three more versions? Now if you'll excuse me, Ironhide is busy trying to bust my door down for insulting his girlfriend. This has been Kid Catastrophe, transform and roll out. <laughs>